Activision, just kind of what are you looking for in a game like this in terms of what success looks like in, in something where you're kind of uh, outmatching your opponent like this? Yeah, you you play a lot of funny lineups that may or may not ever see the, the light of day in uh, in a game. Then you try to play a lot of lineups that you know um, that you want you're you're curious to see how it looks. Um, Obviously, you know, you want to try to execute the things that that you've been practicing. Uh, you know, play play against some somebody different than what you do every single day. Um, they, they're, they're called exhibition games for a reason. Um, but at the same time, you know, you want to make sure that you get some things accomplished. And, the young guys have never been in front of a, a crowd, so that helps a little bit. And that, you know, and, and the other thing it does is it, it it sends coaches home, either like, yeah, you know, that was pretty good, but you know, or you go home and you're like, man, we got a lot of work to do, or you know, um, but. I was never, I, I was never more prepared to go play a game than we were at NC State last year, and look what happened in that game. <laughs> so sometimes things can fool you, you know. And I remember uh, going to Ohio State when Stewie was here to open the season, and you know, at their place, sold out. And I thought, man, this is one game where you could probably say there's a pretty good chance we're going to get beat, and we probably played the best game of the year. Early on, you know, November, you really don't quite know what you're going to get. So, now will you start to try to use the starting lineup you might use for game one tomorrow, um, just to get an idea. Maybe if that'll work. Or, I don't know. Well, maybe pre-injury. Yeah, pre-injury return of dogs. I, yeah, I mean, sometimes I just like to go with the people that have been here already, and whether that turns out to be the starting lineup or not. This is one of those years. Well. The last two or three years, we had no choice, right? The right. starting lineup was easy. It, it was it was made out for me. Uh, this year, you know, it's going to be nice. We have some choices, and it may depend on who we're playing or what the situation is. Um, so I wouldn't I wouldn't read too much into um, you know any of that tomorrow, unless I bench Paige. Then you'll have a story. <laughs> <laughs> last week you said Caitlin was trying was. Finding her voice all of a sudden and being uh -huh. more vocal, being mm -hmm. more of a leader. Are you feeling that she's having that chemistry now with the other players in terms yeah. of Paige and KK? I think so. I, I I don't think those things come easy. You know, um, there's a there's a time <laughs> element to it. Um, you know, we were we were talking on the sideline a little bit. The coaches said um, sometimes when you do game situation things, you know, and um, having players that have played together and they know um, what a certain look means or what a certain situation looks like and they know how you've reacted in the past can tell you a little bit about how they're going to react now that just takes time but you know Caitlin's not a freshman she's played a lot of basketball she's aggressive with the ball she's um, she's tough she's a tough competitor she's in fantastic you know shape um, so she's been everything that we had hoped when we decided that, you know, we wanted to bring her here. You said there was some inconsistency with the post players early on. Are they getting better? Are they sorting themselves out a little? Yeah, I think the, the, I, I have to make a decision a lot of times is the inconsistency because of inexperience. They just haven't been in those situations enough times, or the inconsistencies because mentally, you know, we need to learn how to focus better, or we need to learn how to concentrate on exactly what it is that we're doing. Um, and it's usually a little bit of both, you know. Uh, the inexperience part, that's nothing we can do about that. The not concentrating on something that, you know, we just went over and now we're doing it and you already you know, forgot. Those are things that, uh, that that we have to make sure we can't accept. And so we are we're getting better at understanding what we have to do, and we're getting better at 
I think, bringing the same thing every day. But we've got three completely different, what you would call post players, you know. We've got three distinct guys that are bigger than our guards. That's what I'll call them. <laughs> you know, so they're, they're completely different from each other and they're completely different from the rest of the team. So I, I think that's a, that's a good thing. And they're, you know, they all want to play, they all want to do well, they all want to contribute. So I'm excited for them, you know, I'm excited for them because the key to your team is how well they play and how well they kind of pull the whole thing together. You know, um, if you think back to all the years that we've had the best teams, the greatest teams, there's always been a dominant, dominant post player or two, or two. Um, so, you know, you know, the other thing is, you know, we didn't replace Aaliyah, uh, you know, her points and her rebounds. So um, somebody's got to fill in those gaps and see what happens. What are the distinct things each of the three bring to you? Well, we haven't had anybody to genocide in a while, you know. Um, she takes up a lot of space. She, um, she's, you know, she goes after every offensive rebound. She, she finishes around the basket. <coughs> you know, Ice, Ice lo loves to play on the perimeter. She's a really good passer. You know, I, she's gotten better defensively. Um, and Sarah plays more like a guard. I think she's, uh, a, you know, like a guard forward. You know because she's comfortable, you know, wherever she is on the floor, whether she has to pass it, shoot it, dribble it. So all three of them are different, and they all give us, you know, in a perfect world, I would love to be able to play all, all three of them together sometime. You know, that would be a big lineup. Um, I'm not sure that it would be a successful lineup <laughs> right now because you'd have three players there that the most experienced one has, you know, one year of basketball. But at the same time, you know, there may come a game, the thing that would prevent me from doing it, as much as maybe I would enjoy doing it, is that we don't have two or three other ones. So when you have six, you can afford to do that. There have been years, you know, when I did that. You know, I remember when we won a national championship playing Rebecca, Karen, and Jamel. I had no problem with it. Or Asia, Tamika, and Swin. You know, or, you know, Stewie, Steph, and Tuck. I mean, there's times when you had you have those guys. It's fun. It's fun to play that way, that way. But you have to have other guys, and you know, you can't wear those guys out either. So I got you know we, we have some we have some uh, options, which I like. Has Sarah continued to show you the role that you want her? Yeah, she has. You know, she uh, she's coming out of her shell a little bit. You know, she's a very quiet kid, very reserved in, in so many ways. She's too unselfish in so many ways. She'd rather pass it than shoot it. Um, you know, those of you around, Paige was exactly the same way when she was a freshman, and it worked out okay. Um, but we're encouraging her to, to just be herself. You know, I think sometimes kids come here to play and they want to blend in so badly that they kind of don't stay true to who they are, you know. And you, you, you have to, you have to be who you are. You know, she has a lot to offer, and I don't want it. I don't want her to. It's not my turn yet. Or it's not my time yet. You know, how excited are you for Jana? Um, she's been around the program for so long. You know, it's yeah. so fun to get her opportunity. Yeah, she. Uh, she is a like caged, you know, <laughs> uh, wild animal that needs to be let loose. But you know what happens when you open a cage to a wild animal? They don't just walk out calmly. So there's nothing calm about her. <laughs> so that's the problem. So um, we're gonna have to have a lot of talks with the officials when she gets in the game. She she, uh, she was the biggest cheerleader on the bench oh, last year. Yeah, she's got a lot of emotion to her. She um, she puts 
a lot of herself into the game. She's very, she's a great teammate, um, exceptionally hard on herself. Um, you know, I find that those kids that come from, you know, another another country, another culture, they find themselves over here. There's this, there's this uh, burning desire to succeed and and please and prove that you know we have to kind of it's okay you know it's it's you'll be fine um, so it's not I, I don't it's not going to look it's not going to look pretty maybe early on but uh, it wasn't pretty early early on last year either and it turned out okay so we'll see who uh, might not be available tomorrow aside from those three coming back that you already said that AZ Carroll and uh, Aubrey aside from those three don't yeah tomorrow. Um, I'm thinking that um, who uh, KK uh, twisted her foot about a week ago um, she seems to be fine she's working her way back so I'm, I'm expecting her to, to play a little bit tomorrow uh, Morgan Shelley's been in and out of practice, and um, I don't, th I don't think, based on what I saw today, that she'll be going. And Azy's working her way in slowly but surely, and she looks great. I don't know how much of practice you saw, but she looks really, really, really good, really good. And it's just a matter of time now. Um, but I can't give you an exact date. But, um, Yana. Yana. I don't know. She still has that that sling on. It's come off a little bit, but um, I, I I gotta believe it's gonna be a little a little while longer for her. So we've got a couple guys that I don't have a timetable for. I know this. I know Az's gonna be sooner than than the rest of those guys for sure. I mean Morgan, I should be sooner, but then Az Morgan, then Az, and then depending on how it falls with those other guys. What's Morgan doing now? Well, uh, where should I begin? <laughs> uh, you know, she came out of high school and, and was a quad thing in, in June, um, a hamstring thing, and um, a groin thing. So uh, it's, it's been a kind of a mishmash of things that when she's in practice, she's looked fantastic. I mean, like, uh, like play a lot, kind of player in practice. Because she's another one, similar to Sarah, that you can put her in a lot of different spots, and she's very comfortable, comfortable passing it, shooting it, dribbling it, re rebounding. So, you just haven't had her in practice enough. So the sooner we get her back, the better. Because our like we're not very big, right, at the guard spots, so it'd be great to be, and we can move her. You know, her and Sarah can go back and forth between perimeter play and some inside play. So I'll be anxious to get those those guys back. So Look, Carol, go through the five spot and then yeah. shooting some threes afterwards. Yeah. Obviously, on practice clothes. I mean, is she, is she getting close at all, or do you really never know? With her? Uh, yeah, not, you don't. You don't. She does a lot of. Th she does a little bit more every day of practice, but very little to do with contact. So until we can get that into the mix, it'll just be limited. That's the best I can tell you. Last time we saw you, you said Q had a, a great week of practice. She did. She she was really good. Does she continue yeah. that? Yeah. She's active defensively. She gets, you know. Um, she gets a, a ton of opportunities on the offensive board. She's just been incredibly aggressive. Uh, she's, um, yeah, she's she's making it so that uh, she has, to, you know, she w wants to be in the rotation. So we also keep hearing about Allie shooting all the time. Is she showing yeah. you more than that? Shot the ball great today. Um, uh, she's these these guys. You know, they're the, the, the young guys. What they were really good at in, co in high school, 
when they come here, they're pretty good at that. They're pretty good at that. Whatever that was in high school. And she was a fantastic scorer, a shooter in high school. What they were, what maybe they didn't do a lot of in high school, they really, really struggle with that here. They've never guarded anybody like they're guarding now. They've never played this, this pace. You know, it's never been this physical for them. So the new things are difficult for them. But the things they brought with them, I mean, she can really shoot it. When we have her, Daisy, and Paige out on the floor at the same time, that's a lot of shots going up that go in. You know, and Ash, Ash comes and goes, you know? She, like she'll have one day where she'll, she'll make everything. So we have a lot of guys that can shoot. We make a lot of shots. Fear is that so is the other team. <laughs> so I'm cautiously optimistic. Let's put it that way. Ice had a lot more confidence with more towards the end of last year than she did at the beginning of the year. Do you feel like she's entered this year with it? With Who's that? Ice. Ice? Yeah, I think so. I think she's in the best shape she's ever been in. Uh, she's worked really hard in, in the preseason. Um, I, Ice is pretty good when she knows you're counting on her, you know. Uh, I think, I hope anyway, she knows that we are counting on her a lot. Uh, and and the confidence, I, I, I got to tell you, that is the hardest thing for someone to, like some people just naturally have it. And they're you know, they're, 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 I don't know that they're at the page level, delusional, where they, they don't think there's anything they can't do. But there's a lot of kids that are very confident in their own abilities. Some, they have to get it. They have to become confident by having success. The trick is then, those kids, can they keep it? Can they hold on to it when they're struggling a little bit? So that's... Uh, uh, both Jenna and, and Ice, I think, are very hard on, it, on themselves. They, they take too many things personal, you know, a missed shot, a bad pass, or, you know, something. So it's, it's, it's going to be some work for the two of them. Um, but, you know, that's what, if they didn't have all these issues, they wouldn't need us, right? They would just come out here and do their thing. So. It's up to us to make sure that we guide them the right way and, you know, lead them down the right path that puts them in that situation. And it may take time, you know, it may take time. Um, we were sitting here talking last year. Uh, I don't know that I, I don't, I don't know that any of you have a transcript of me talking last year in first week of practice going, you know, I'm just going to have to find a way to not play Ash and KK 40 minutes every night. You would have went, what? Why would you do that? Well, we did. And it took some time, right? But when we got it, we got it. So... That's, that's probably what I'm looking forward to is, you know, I want to see how quickly we get it. I know we'll get it. I just don't know at what point. I mean, I don't know when, you know, what's on people's calendar, but our schedule's not going to do them any favors. You sound very, very encouraged about easy is it likely she still misses the opener but could be ready by second or third game or? I, I think it's it's um, it's a feel a comf a, a comfort confident feel I'm ready to go and you know she has a, a limit in practice of how many minutes you know she's going to be out there so there will come a time 
next week, the week after, the week, I don't know, when she's just going to come to me and say, I'm good to go right now. Does it, does I'll it be seem, looking forward to that. Does it seem uh, kind of strange uh, that we're celebrating your 40th anniversary this year? You have like ice cream named after you and stuff. Is it, is it kind of like a Twilight Zone kind of thing? Or? Yeah, I, I, uh, And, and they've had a, and Anna will tell you this, they've had a very difficult time with me. <laughs> what are you shaking your head about? <laughs> <laughs> they've had a very difficult time with me trying to get some cooperation for this thing, and I'm not very, I'm not being very cooperative. So, um, if you were to ask me, tell me what the agenda is, you know what's going to happen? And I say I would tell you I have no idea. I know they they've got something planned, but I don't know what it is. They they know what it is, but I do not. Um, however, when you when you step away, take a minute to step away from it and try to put in the context what this all means and what has transpired. Um, you know, it's pretty hard to, it's pretty hard to believe. And, and when, when CD and I actually do have to deal with it because people bring stuff to us that we have to do, we just look at each other and it's very, very, very difficult to come to grips with one, being in one place for this this long and two, having happened what happened during those 40 years. There's people that have done great things but I'm not sure 40 years and there's people that have been 40 years that haven't done the things. So to, to have both of them happen it's hard to hard, hard to wrap yourself around that and I, I'm not looking forward to that night to be honest to, with you from what I understand there's a lot of people coming that have no business being here <laughs> in the middle of November <laughs> in the middle of the week really they should find something better to do we should zoom it let them watch it at home <laughs> so I I get a rash just thinking about it. <laughs> I'm not looking forward to that night whatsoever. I wasn't thrilled about the Notre Dame game last year, all those guys being here. Was there ever a time when you liked the attention and the accolades or it's always been not uh, your time? <laughs> I, I can't. Um, you know, it's funny, when I thought we were getting really good, like in the late 80s, you know, on our going to our first mm -hmm. Final Four, you know, 1991. And and nobody gave it that. Like, we went to the Final Four, it was like one reporter and one guy with a camera. And I thought, man, how's this possible? That nobody cares. So I was pissed. And then when we won a national championship in 95, we were on our way back and we were on the bus. And, uh, you know, when Jamel said, this is like OJ you know, with the helicopters and everything front. <laughs> and I said to Jeff Hathaway, I said, hey Jeff, is there any way that we can do what we just did and not have to deal with what we're gonna have to deal with? And he said, no, there's no way. And it's been down, all downhill since then, <laughs> to be honest with you. It's been all downhill since then. I, 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 could t I, I, I wish I could tell you, like when our, when our Entrance used to be over there, and our bench used to be over here, and I had to walk all the way down here. And so, so the coach is like, "Get over yourself. Nobody's looking at you." But I just felt like, you know, you're walking around, and it just doesn't feel right. It didn't feel right. Now it's easy. You just sneak in here like this. <laughs> but I've never been. I've never been comfortable. Um, I fake it pretty well. I, I act like I do. I act like I like it. But 
I think the the, the the overall feeling that I've always had has always been the focus needs to be on the the actual players that are actually playing. And but I also understand it. Don't get me wrong. I understand it. I understand it. I understand it. One of the most nerve-wracking times I've ever had was standing at the podium when I was inducted into the Naismith Hall of Fame and looking out, and I almost, I couldn't speak. It was really hard. I look back on it and I go, that's not what I wanted to say. I was just mumbling bullshit, I guess, I don't know. Just saying st saying words, I, I, I lost complete. Yeah, I'm not. <clears throat> no. Mm -mm. We should have had the 40th celebration in the bubble year. <laughs> <laughs> you perked for the bubble. We should. I should have started here five years earlier. <laughs> I should have come here in '81 and in the bubble. Skip, skip we should have bubbled it. Country. Bubbled it. And people couldn't even ask you questions and talk to you because they all had masks on. <laughs> that would have been fantastic. <laughs> If you had been here that long, though, you'd be here longer than the Big East Women's Basketball Conference was alive. I mean, you're only three years apart as it is. When did it start? 79? The Big they, East started they, in they, 79 on the men's side. They said women's was 43rd year this year. And so you're that would be, what, 80, 81, 82? 81, 82? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> I know. There's not one coach left. I've been through, like, three or four coaches at some schools. There's not one coach that, shit, I don't, I'm trying to think, I mean, other than Bruno, I don't know one coach that's still coaching at their school mm -hmm. when I started. Not a single one. Bruno and I, I think, were the only ones. That's like two old guys that need to get a life, man. <laughs>